Hi everyone, my name is Scott Drummond and I am so glad that you are worshiping with us today. We have a great service plan for you. We're doing some new things and we're gonna be having a baptism today. We're also going to be taking in some new members into Peace Church and Pastor Bill is starting a brand new series called Uncertain, which is all about how to live in difficult times. And so if any of that sounds great to you, let's get started. As we start today, we wanna to start by welcoming the presence of God in this place. And we're gonna do it by lighting this candle this morning. And so holy God, we welcome you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I also want for us to pray together this morning. Um, and this is a, a, a prayer that um, I want you to just even personalize in your own heart. And then we're going to close with this time of prayer with saying the Lord's Prayer together. If that's new to you, it's okay. But I encourage you to participate with us and engage in worship. Let's pray. Holy God, I thank you for today. I thank you that you continue to be Lord over all. I thank you that your hand of blessing continues to be on your people and we are humbled and we are so thankful. Lord, I wanna to continue to lift up our nation um, to you. I'm asking for your help and for healing over its people, for that you would give us direction and that you would be the center of what we do and who we are. Lord, I also just am, I'm reminded of all the veterans that have served our country to help fight and even lay down their lives to, to give us a freedom that ultimately it's a freedom to worship you without persecution. And for that, we're thankful. And we pray blessing over all those that have served our nation in this way. But Lord, we continue to turn to you as the author and the finisher of our faith, the one that is leading us every step of the way. And we say, God, please come. Please continue to lead us and guide us and let your will be accomplished in us and through us. Now let's pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Now I want us to celebrate together as we can watch someone be baptized into the very kingdom of God. This is powerful. So this is Mark Henson, and he's here to be baptized. Mark, remind me when you started coming here to church. How long ago was that? It's been right around a year, a little less. So a little about, about a year ago, like two or three months, four or five months before COVID, uh, Mark started coming, and then COVID hit. And Mark wanted to get baptized in our church, but because of COVID, we're not meeting, right? And we talked about doing it, you know, on, on tape, but we wanted to do it in person. And so that's why Mark's here today. And so, Mark, I have a, a few things that I just want to um, kind of remind our church family with as we talk about baptism. So, um, first of all, let me ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask, do you reject all the evil, repent of your sins, and accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace? And, that's incorporation, right? And... Do you promise to serve him as your Lord? That's what? That's commission. Every baptism is about incorporation and commission. In union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. I do. And do you, let me ask the church family, uh, because baptism isn't just for 
Mark, it's for all of us. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Let me ask you this question as a church family. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin, that's our incorporation into his kingdom, and your commitment to Christ, that's your commission. Do you do that? If so, say, we do. And will you nurture Mark in the Christian faith and in life so that by your care, you may surround him with the community of Christ's love and forgiveness. Will you do that? Say, we will. So let me remind us all once more. This water reminds us that we are washed anew in the love of Jesus. We are incorporated into his family and we are commissioned to his cause. So Mark, do you wish to be baptized into this faith? I do. Mark, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to uh, bow your heads in a word of prayer as I lift up Mark to you in prayer here today. Lord, we thank you for Mark and for his life. We pray that you would use him in a mighty way, that your kingdom would come live in him and it would live through him just as it does in all of us. And so God, we give you thanks for welcoming him into the family of God and for commissioning him to the cause of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Why don't you give him a round of applause here today. Welcome, Mark, into the family of God. Thank you guys for joining us here. Why I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love you, the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers.
everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a few announcements for you, but I thought Christina was going to join us today. Uh, Scott, I'm over here. Christina, what are you doing over there? And um, are we still doing this Christmas thing? Well, there's only 47 days left until Christmas, so we need to do announcements over here. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Thank you for joining us for worship today. If you are online, please fill out the virtual connect card. And if you plan to join us next week for in-person worship, you can do so on the website. Reserve your spot. And just a reminder, we are providing programming for in-person worship for kids that are age 5 through 6th grade. And so if you've not yet come to in-person worship and want your kids to be a part of that, you are welcome. Are you ready for Christmas World? I don't know if I'm ready for Christmas World, but I do like what we're doing. Okay, we'll easy into it. Uh, we're going to start with pumpkins. You can start picking these up today, this Sunday, from 11 to 1. You can come Wednesday, November 11th, from 6 to 8 to pick them up. Or you can come next Sunday again from 11 to 1 to pick all your pumpkins up. Fantastic. Let's say I... Uh, reserved seven pumpkins, but I thought of two more neighbors I want to give it to. Can I grab a few extra pumpkins? Absolutely. We have a few extra just in case that happens. Uh, so once you pick them up, all you'll need to do is just sign your name on the back of that card and you'll be all set. I love it. So what's next? All right. So in December, we're going to hand out Christmas trees. They're going to look like this. Mm -hmm. Just another way to show our neighbors that we care about them and that we appreciate them. Uh, these still don't make themselves. We haven't figured out how to do that within the last week. So we are going to need you guys to help us assemble about 500 of these. If you'd like to help, you can go to the website, click on our block. There'll be a place where you can sign up to help. Now, I have a question for you. Let's say um, someone may not be super handy. Can they still be involved? Yes, they can still be involved. We need anyone and everyone to help us out on November 15th. Great. We just hope that all of you can participate in our block in some way because we believe that together we are going to make a difference in our neighborhoods. And then finally, I do want to thank you for your generosity uh, and your faithfulness in giving because it enables Peace Church 
to reach out to make a difference. We don't want to be a church that becomes insular and just focused on ourselves. We want to always be looking out and reaching out into our, into our community. And you are what is making that possible. So thank you for your generosity and thank you for your faithfulness. We pray your blessing back upon you for that. And we thank you again for joining us for worship. Hey, Peace Church, I'm Pastor Bill. Thanks for joining us in worship today from wherever it is that you're worshiping from. We're so glad you joined us. If this is your first time with us today, we are really glad that you're here. And just say hi in the comments to let us know that you've joined us in worship. Whether this is your first time or your hundredth time, we want to just blow out the comments. We want to have a conversation with you. Now, today we are starting a brand new series called Uncertain. Why? Because if there is one word that captures our culture today, it's the word uncertain. Everything feels uncertain. The election's been uncertain. The economy's uncertain. Our jobs are uncertain. Life is uncertain. Everything feels uncertain. It feels unpredictable. It feels unsettled. It feels unstable. It literally feels uncertain. Now, if, you, if I would have thought about this pandemic and the longer that we would have got into it, I would have thought, I'll get used to it. But I haven't got used to it. In fact, I'm living in it, but I'm not used to it. It still feels weird to me. It doesn't, this new normal that they've talked about, it doesn't feel like a new normal. It feels abnormal. Everything feels off. Everything feels a little bit wrong to me. In fact, when I walk out the front door of my house, it just feels weird like my house is this safe place and the world is this dangerous place that's not normal that's abnormal and so everything feels just a little off to me it feels a little upside down to me it feels uncertain and so in this series we want to look at the certain that's in the midst of the uncertain that we're living in. And so if you are looking for a little certain today, then I've got something for you. Now, all this uncertainty that we're living in, that produces a little thing in us called stress. Are you stressed out? Raise your hand. If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. Stress is stressing us out. Stress is, it, it's all over. This pandemic fatigue that we're feeling we are tired out, we are worn out, we are stressed out. And the longer that we live in stress, it produces this little thing called anxiety. Now, I bet you wouldn't be surprised if I told you that anxiety has skyrocketed since the pandemic. In fact, the studies tell us that one in three Americans are now feeling clinical levels of anxiety. Not just the normal anxiety that you and I feel every day, the fret, the worry, the restlessness that we have in our spirits. No, clinical anxiety, panic attacks, and, and feelings of dread and doom and hyperventilating. Now, it's interesting that this anxiety is affecting different age groups in different ways. In fact, the younger you are, the more anxious you feel, which is exactly the opposite of what I'd expect. I'd expect that the older you were, the more anxious you'd feel. Why? Because there's more risk of getting the disease. There's more risk of dying from the disease. And so you'd think the older you are, the more anxious you'd feel. But it's exactly the opposite. The younger you are, the more anxious you feel. Here's a study that the CDC did uh, starting in April, that broke out how people are feeling anxious by age group. And you'll notice as you go down this, anxiety levels increase with each age group. And when you get down to the 18 to 29 years old, they're almost half of them are feeling deep levels of anxiety in their life. Why? Because of uncertainty. Remember, uncertainty leads to stress, and stress leads to anxiety. And so, a young person has a lot of uncertainty in their life. They have uncertainty around their finances because they're not established in their job. They have uncertainty around their job because they're not established in their career. They have uncertainty around their kids because they're not established as parents. And because they have all this uncertainty, it leads to the stress and the stress leads to anxiety. And they're feeling it. Almost 50% of young people are feeling it. It's even worse in teens. 
Teens, it's over 50%. So if you're a teen and you're watching today, I want to say to you, this is hard. I know you're struggling. You're struggling and you're stressed out with all the normal stuff that you get stressed with. You're stressed with grades and gangs and drugs and sex and, and bullying. And that's hard enough. But then you add a pandemic on top of that and it's really stressing you out. And so you're feeling it. And if you're a young person and maybe you have young kids, you're feeling it too. And so I just want to say to you, this message today, it's especially for you. It's for all of us, but it's especially for you because you're feeling it even more than the rest of us. Now, let me just start out by a true confession. I'm feeling it too. I'm feeling the stress and the anxiety of this pandemic. When we had to close in-person worship, it stressed me out. Why? Because in the entire time of my ministry, I have only closed church one other time. One other time. And that was about a year ago when Pickerington got buried in like two inches of ice. And I had gotten up the Sunday before and I bragged to the entire congregation, I have never closed church in my entire ministry. And the next Sunday, we got buried in two inches of ice. And I had to close the church. Isn't it interesting how God humbles us? But I'm going to tell you, closing the church that Sunday, it stressed me out. But it was nothing compared to this pandemic because closing church for one Sunday is nothing like having to close the church and, and suspend in-person worship for six months. I was super stressed. I didn't even know if I was going to have a job after three weeks. And so, and so, you know, everything was different. Worship was different. Life groups were different. Missions were different. Every single decision that we had to make was unparalleled. It was uncharted. It was uncertain. And uncertainty leads to stress, which leads to anxiety. And so I was feeling it. Maybe you've been feeling it. Maybe you've been feeling it at school. Maybe you've been feeling it at work. And you know what I'm talking about. And so I just want to say that this is hard. And I get it. What did it do to me? It started creating anxiety in me. I started having some GI issues. I started having some sleepless nights. I started having some feelings of dread and doom. And I just want you to know, you know what? True, true confession. I get it. I'm right there with you. We're in uncharted territory. None of us have been through this before and we're all feeling it. And so just hang in there. Now, kind of before I start talking about anxiety, I want us to realize that just because we're feeling anxious, it doesn't mean that we lack faith. You hear me? Just because we're feeling anxious doesn't mean that we lack faith. Feelings aren't faith. Feelings aren't sin. Sometimes we think they are. Like, for instance, sometimes we think that if we get angry, we start to feel guilty like I'm sinning. But the Bible doesn't ever say that. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians that he says, in your anger, do not sin. What's he saying? He's saying, you're going to get upset. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get angry. And in that, don't sin. So it's not the feeling it's the use of the feeling. It's the same with anxiety. When we feel anxious, it's not the feeling. It's how we use it. It's sort of like this cane that I got from our Helping Hands ministry. By the way, our Helping Hands ministry, we have distributed over 1,700 pieces of equipment during COVID. That's so cool. The mission of Jesus doesn't stop. You know, we might have shut all kinds of things down in our culture, but we don't shut down the mission of Jesus, which is why if you haven't got signed up for your pumpkin for our block, then sign up today because the mission of Jesus doesn't stop. Even though we're social distancing, even though we're, we're holed up in our home, the mission of Jesus doesn't stop. So anyways, this cane, there's nothing inherently good or bad about this cane. It's how we use it. 
For instance, we could take this cane and we could use it to help a person walk like we do in the Helping Hands ministry, and that's a good thing. Or we could use this cane and we could whack someone over the head and kill them like they do in the movies, and that's a bad thing. And so it's not the cane, it's the use of the cane. And it's the same with our feelings. It's not the feeling, it's the use of the feeling. It's how, it's how the feeling works itself out in our life. And so let's talk about how we deal with how we feel around anxiety. And to do that, I want us to go back and look at what the Apostle Paul tells us in another letter. Remember, we just looked at what he told us about anger. I want us to look at what he talks about, how he tells us to deal with our feeling of anxiety. So if you have your Bibles or your Bibles, I want you to go to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to begin in verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. How are you doing with that? Anxious for nothing? Right in the middle of this pandemic? Are you kidding me? We are anxious about everything. We're anxious about the election. We're anxious about our jobs. We're anxious about the economy. We're anxious about our grades. We're anxious about everything, in fact. But in everything, that's all the things that we're anxious about. And plus a little bit more. It's everything. In all of those things, Paul says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then he goes on in verse 7, and this is what he says. And the peace of God. Wouldn't you like a little bit of that? A little bit of peace in your life right now? The peace that the world can't take away because the world didn't give it. Not our peace, not the world's peace, but God's peace. I'd like a little bit of that, wouldn't you? That peace that surpasses all understanding. How, how'd you get that piece, Bill? Well, I don't know. Well, explain it to me. Well, I can't. It just kind of, it surpasses my understanding. It's beyond my knowledge. I just know that I have this peace, this, this rest that, that comes not from me, not from the world, but it comes from God. That peace that passes all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I have to When I was studying this, I was reminded that Paul was writing this letter to the Philippians while he is in jail. And think about that for a minute. It's hard to talk about the peace of God and not be anxious about anything when all you see is bars and iron. And so I'm thinking that as Paul is writing this letter, he's saying, you know, He's talking about, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it will, and he's trying to think of the word, it'll what? It will, hmm, what, what does the peace of God do? What? And he's thinking and he's thinking, then he looks up and he says, oh, it'll guard, just like that big dude outside my prison door. It'll guard. It won't let anything in that's not supposed to be in. It won't let anything out that's not supposed to be out. God God won't let anything in. God won't let anything out that he doesn't want in or out. It will guard. It will guard our hearts and our minds. Where does anxiety hit us? It hits us right in the heart. It hits us right in the mind. We start worrying. We start fretting. We We get upset. We have feelings of doom and gloom. We start to hyperventilate. We start to feel anxious. That hits us right in our hearts and our minds and God guards our hearts and our minds so that anxiety doesn't hit us there in fact he guards our hearts and our minds where in Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus and so our hearts and our minds aren't in the things of the world it's not in the things that we worry about it's in Jesus now let me ask you this How many of you would like verse 7 in your life? How many of you would would want the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus? I would love to have verse 7 in my life. Well, here's what I'll say. To get to verse 7, you got to go through verse 6. And so I want to go back to verse 6. I want to kind of backpedal a little bit and look at what Paul says in verse 6 and he starts out by saying be anxious for nothing 
be anxious for nothing. So let me just have you say to somebody that you're sitting beside today, uh, maybe say it to two people. Why? Because one of them is COVID comatose. They're so numb right now, they're hardly responding to anything. Or if you're by yourself, just say this to yourself. Be anxious for nothing. Go ahead, just say that. Be anxious for nothing. If you're anxious for something, then I've got something for you today. And so Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Are you kidding me, Paul? Paul, did you see the stock market today? Paul, do you realize that I am trying to hybrid school my kids? Paul, do you realize I just lost my job? Paul, do you realize that, that I just got this medical thing from the doctor that's not good? Paul, do you realize we're in a pandemic? This isn't just some little virus, Paul. This is a world epidemic. And prison Paul, he's saying to us, hey, dude, hey, bro, I, I, I'm in a cell. I'm in a cold, dark prison cell. I have been beaten. I've been flogged. I've been stabbed. I've been clubbed. I've been shipwrecked, I've been hungry, I've been cold. I know a few things about some things to be anxious about. So let me show you. Now, the Greek word that Paul uses for anxious is this word meribnate. Merib meribnate. And it kind of sounds like marinate, right? And that's exactly what we do with our anxiety. We marinate it. We just, yeah, I don't know about you, but when I'm anxious or worried about something, I just rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. And then when I'm done rehearsing it, then I go over it and I go over it and I go over it. What am I doing? I'm marinating it. I'm marinating it. And a lot of times this will happen to me in the middle of the night. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll be anxious or worried about something and I'll look over at the clock and it's two o'clock and then I'll look over the clock and it's three o'clock and then I'll look over the clock and it's four o'clock. And then I start to get even more anxious. Why? Because I'm worried that if I don't get some sleep, I'm going to wake up exhausted. What am I doing? I'm marinating my anxiety. Now, merim, merim nate, also the end of the word, sort of sounds like knots, which is exactly what marinating our anxiety does to us. It ties us up in knots. And we just get, we, even if we get any sleep in the middle of the night, maybe 45 minutes of sleep, we wake up and we're just in this pile of dread. And we are in double knots and we're in triple knots and we're trying to untie our emotional knots all day long. And so Paul says, be anxious for nothing. For no thing. Why? Because things are what makes us anxious. Our grades, kids, cars, jobs, our health. So Paul tells us to be anxious for no thing, for nothing, for no thing. Why? Because things are what make us anxious. We get anxious over grades. We get anxious over the economy. We get anxious over our feelings. We get anxious over school. We get anxious over a job. We get anxious over things. And Paul says, be anxious for no thing. Why? Because there's really nothing. In the scope of things, there's really nothing. So don't be anxious about nothing. Be anxious about no thing. So if you're anxious today about something, then I've got something that's going to make a big difference. Let's read on to what Paul says. He says, be anxious about no thing, but then in everything. Not in some things, not in a few things, not in all, only the things that you can handle, not in just the things that you can't handle. See, that's what we do a lot of times in our life. We try to handle it ourselves, and then when we can't handle it, we go to God to try to handle it for us. And that's not what Paul's saying. He's saying in everything, in, in the things you can handle and in the things you can't handle. And when we go to God in everything, then when the things that happen that we can't handle hit us, we're not anxious. And so 
part of it is learning to go to God in everything, in all things. And then Paul says, by prayer and petition. Prayer and petition. Prayer and petition. Prayer and petition. What's prayer and petition? Prayer and petition is communicating with God. It's talking to God. When we marinate, we're talking to ourselves. And Paul says, don't marinate, communicate. Communicate with God. And so let me talk to you a little bit about how I'm learning to do this in my own life. You see, when I start to marinate, maybe it happens in the middle of the night, I try to make this little mental shift in my mind. I try to start to realize, no, Bill, don't marinate, communicate, communicate with God. And so I begin to pray. Now there's this natural battle that goes on in me. Why? Because before I know it, I'm back to marinating. Has that ever happened to you? You're marinating, then you try to pray about it, and then you're back to marinating. Why does that happen? Well, a big reason it happens is because of the devil. You see, the devil doesn't want you to talk to God. The devil doesn't want you to pray. In fact, what the devil wants is he wants you to worry. And so he's going to get you off of prayer as fast as he can. Why? Because when we're worrying, we feel paralyzed. And when we're worrying, we're not growing in our faith. We're not connecting with God. We're not, we're not being able to serve God because we're so focused on ourselves and our circumstances. And so the devil is always trying to get your mind and your heart away from Christ Jesus onto yourself and the things that you worry about. So here's what I do. In the middle of the night, start to marinate. Then I start to pray. Then I start to go back to marinate again. And this is what I do. I threaten the devil. I say, hey devil, if you keep having me worry about this, I'm going to keep praying. And when I keep praying, the devil doesn't like that. And so guess what? He leaves. And then this is what happens. I'm praying, and before you know it, I'm asleep. Now, I used to feel guilty about falling asleep when I was praying, but I realized, no, I'm actually grateful. Why? Because it's like, have you ever had a young child climb up on your lap and you just held them in your arms and you're talking to them and they're talking to you and before you know it, they're asleep? Doesn't that feel good? That's exactly how God works with us. And so when I fall asleep in God's hands, I am grateful. Now, the real key to all this, though, is in Paul's next words, where he says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. With thanksgiving. Why? Because gratitude is the antidote to anxiety in our lives. With thanksgiving we pray frame our prayers and our petitions with thanksgiving in our hearts now typically when you think about thanksgiving when you give thanks to somebody you do it after the fact they've already done something for hey george thanks for dropping me off or hey sally thanks for picking me up or hey mom thanks for you know making dinner tonight and so they've already done it it's a response to what they've done. That's why we give thanks. I mean, you think about even when you give thanks at dinner, the food's already there. You're giving thanks for what God's already done. Now, occasionally, we give thanks ahead of time. Like, there's been times I drop my car off at my trusted mechanic, and I'll say to him as I'm leaving, BJ, thanks for fixing my car. Why do I say that? Because without a shadow of a doubt, I have utter confidence that BJ's going to fix it. And so it's almost like it's already happened. That's Thanksgiving. And Paul says, frame your prayers, all your prayers, everything, all your petitions with Thanksgiving. Pray like it already happened and thank God for it. Thank you, God, for just helping me get through this difficult situation. Thank you, God, for being with me even when I feel alone. Thank you, God, for just helping me deal with what's stressing me out right now. God, thank you for just getting me through it. And so you pray with thanksgiving. Frame all your prayers and your petitions as if God already did it for you. So I don't know what it is 
what uncertainty it is that you're facing right now. I don't know what stress you're having. I don't know what anxiety you're feeling, but here's what I do know. The younger you are, the more you're feeling it. And the truth is all of us are feeling it at some level. So let me just tell you what, what I'm trying to do through this pandemic, because true confession, I'm feeling it just like everybody else. Here's what I do. The first thing I do is I just, I breathe. You say, oh, Bill, he's getting all spiritual because he's kind of breathing the breath of God, all that kind of stuff. No. I just breathe, physically breathe. <sighs> Try that with me. Just breathe in real deeply. And then breathe out. Do it again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Doesn't that feel good? There's something about breathing that just begins to relieve the tension in our bodies. And then what I do is I, I breathe in, and then I say, Yahweh, as I breathe out. Yahweh is the name of God. It was a name that was so sacred to the Israelites in the Old Testament that they wouldn't even pronounce, they wouldn't even speak the name of God. But Jesus, he comes along and because he dies on the cross, the curtain in the temple is torn in two and he opens up full access to God. And so now we can speak God's name. So I breathe in. I breathe out. <sighs> Yahweh. And Jesus, Jesus' Hebrew name is Yahshua, Yahshua, Yah, Yahweh, and Shua, meaning salvation. So I breathe in and I breathe out. <sighs> Yahshua. Here comes anxiety. Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> Yahweh. Here comes stress. Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> Yahshua. Here comes uncertainty. Breathe in. Breathe out. Yahweh. And I start to begin to pray and to petition. What, is, what does that do? It, it's centering my mind on Christ and on God. Not on all the things I'm worrying about, not on all the frustrations, not on the anxieties of the world, but on Christ Jesus. That's where I'm centering my heart and my mind. And so then I begin to pray and I pray and I petition God with thanksgiving. God, I am so thankful that you've helped me through this time. God, I am so thankful that, that you're getting me through this tough time. God, I know you're with me and I thank you for that. And then in the midst of that prayer, begin to feel his peace. This peace I, I can't explain. This peace that, that just fills me and rests my soul. And I fall asleep right in his arms. And I look over at the clock and it's seven. I don't know what uncertainty you're facing. I don't know what stress you're feeling. I don't know what anxiety it is that you're going through. But here's what I know. The one who is peace will give you his peace. And there is someone who is certain in the midst of all the things that are uncertain in our life. So let's pray. Lord, it is with thanksgiving that we thank you for holding us in the midst of this pandemic. And so whatever it is that, that we're feeling anxious or stressed about right now in our lives, I pray that you'll help us to just breathe in and breathe out and center ourselves on you, the one who is peace, the one who gives peace. 
and then to pray, to frame all of our prayers and our petitions with thanksgiving as if you have already done it, Lord. So we just say, thanks, God. Thanks for being with us, even in the midst of this uncertainty that we feel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now I want us to join Larry as we invite some new members into our church. What a wonderful celebration to have new people be a part of this good news of Jesus Christ and his gospel to the world. Larry. Thank you, Bill. I'm excited today to introduce our newest Peace Church members, Shelby and Jay Garrett. Good to have you folks here today, and I really enjoyed our three-week class together. I appreciate your participation and your, your joy in just serving the Lord and serving here at Peace Church. And so I have a few questions for you uh, as a part of your vows of becoming a member here at Peace Church. The first question is, do you renounce the spirit of wickedness, and reject the evil powers of the world, and repent of your sin? If so, would you say, I, I do? I do. Do you accept and promise to live in the freedom and power that God gives you and to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? If so, would you say, I do? I do. Do you voluntarily confess Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord? If so, would you say, I do? I do. Are you willing to remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world through the United Methodist Church and to do all that is in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, would you say, I will? I will. And will you also promise to faithfully continue to practice the six spiritual disciplines that we have studied? If so, would you say, I will? I will. You know, take just a moment now. We talked about this uh, during the class, but you folks have an interesting history as everybody does. You've got a story. so. Why don't you, Jay, take just a moment and talk about how you ended up here at Peace Church, and then uh, shall we talk about uh, ministries in which you're engaged here at church, Jay? Uh, yes, yeah, so I grew up in the uh, United Methodist Church in Williamson, West Virginia, and I uh, moved up here when I was in high school. Uh, so we, we started coming to Peace, uh, moved away uh, after high school, I got married to Shelby, and uh, about five years ago we moved back and uh, settled right back into Peace where we've had a, a great experience. Thanks, Jay. Shelby? And uh, I've been serving with the, um, the children's ministry, um, and we're starting back classes today, so, yay. Wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Well, it's so good to have you all. And let me just offer a prayer of thanksgiving and blessing. Now, let's join, join together in prayer. Jesus, we, we thank you that you call us to be a part of your family, the family of God. I thank you for Jay and Shelby and for their family and for their son, Max, and, and for the, the joy they have in, in serving uh, you here in this place. And so I pray your blessing in their lives. Thank you for their desire to get to know your son better and to serve him uh, in more effective ways as they grow in the knowledge and experience and knowing Jesus Christ. So thank you for this time together. Thank you that you call us to life in your son and for the blessing we have of eternal life through his sacrifice on the cross. We give you thanks in Jesus' name, amen. And let me be the first to say welcome to the Peace Church family, Shelby and Jay. Good to have you.
worship, so will I. I can see. As we close our service today, we wanted to give you some discussion questions and hopefully you can talk about this with those that are watching with you right now or even with your life group this week. So let's take a look. Number one, what is stressing you out the most right now and why? Number two, do you marinate more or pray more? And then number three, what is one thing you need to pray about with thanksgiving? Again, we want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that you have a great week. Take care.